Welcome back to one of our videos. If you want to build a house on a hill, this is everything you need to know. We'll cover a lot of details. Stick with us and you'll enjoy it. Welcome to one of my projects. This is a complicated project in Los Altos Hills. It's a hilly area. And in this project, you'll see, we have a lot of slope that we've had to deal with and the ways of building foundations in areas like these with the top type of soil we have. And there are ways in which we deal with cutting into a hill, making the home structurally sound. And when you build a custom home like this, you have to deal with all those things. And a third thing you have to deal with is drainage. Drainage becomes a big deal in certain cities. And this is one of them. So Follow me along as I show you what we're building here. The entrance to the home will be on this gentle slope and the car will come, there'll be a driveway and it turns around and it goes back there where the front entrance of the home will be. And now we are in the foundation stage. Yeah, we are able to build a project like this typically in a year and a half. So we've already spent about seven months grading, doing the foundation, doing the drainage work, and we have about eight months more to go. And I'll, I'll take you through each of the steps. So when you start a foundation for a home like this, first thing we do is we get the surveyor involved. Typically, there is a survey done before the plans are made. Then the home is situated on that site plan, which is developed by both the surveyor as well as our designer or architect. And then you place the home there and you get the permits. And once we start construction, we bring back the surveyor. The surveyor does what's called staking. They mark all these points. So all these sticks with the flags that you're seeing, they tell us the elevation of each one of these so that gives us an idea how much soil to cut or fill in these areas the sticks also tell us all the corners of the property so we know how to basically position the foundation exactly the way it is in the plans once we set up the foundation the surveyor comes back yet again and writes a letter stating that we have placed the foundation exactly the way it was in the survey and the site plan and that letter is given to the city so the city knows two things a we are situating things the way we were we're supposed to situate and B, we're not making things any bigger than shown in the plans. And that's important for cities. Their tax revenue is based on square footage of the properties. So the city knows we are not cheating. Nobody bribed us to make the project bigger than it is in the plans. So that letter is important. It goes to the city. Then they let us pour the concrete and finish the foundation. There are three types of foundations. There's a slab foundation you may have heard of. There's a raised foundation you may have heard of. And the third one in hilly areas, specifically in areas with what's called expansive soil. Third type of foundation is a pier and grade beam foundation. So what that foundation entails is we basically end up having a lot of piers. The diameter of each pier is known and the type of rebar and the amount of rebar and the thickness of rebar, all that is determined by the structural engineer. And the soils engineer is in involved and as we dig each of these piers we use an auger like a corkscrew and as we dig each of these piers the soils engineer tells us when to stop digging he, he or she looks at the soil that's coming out they literally hold the soil in their hand and they establish whether we've hit base rock or whether we are still going through what's called native soil you see these are pretty deep if somebody falls in here it's a big accident so we don't want that to happen so we cover this with plywood but now you can imagine the amount of concrete that we need to pour in all these holes each one of these being a pier that's step one so i've given you I've given you a long description of step one we have poured 43 cubic yards of concrete so far in the piers that's three concrete trucks the big trucks that you see and that was all done in about half a day now we set up forms. You see, these are called forms. You see the thread here. The thread is an indication of way of one side of the foundation. Then we'll set up the forms with wood on one side of the foundation. Then we'll set up the forms on the other side. So we get the thickness of the grade beam. Grade beam is what connects all of these piers together and the home sits on the grade beam. So now, now you can imagine if there's earthquake and there's two types of movement, there's lateral movement and up and down movement, basically the piers and the grade beam keep the home from shifting. That's why this type of foundation is built 
designed and built in areas like this. So when we set up these forms, then we set up rebar between them, connecting all the piers according to the structural design. Then the structural engineer comes back, he writes another letter describing that we've done what is in the plans. Then the city inspector comes in, he looks at everything. We give him the letter saying that the structural engineer approves how we have set up the forms and only then are we allowed to pour concrete. And that's another fun exercise. Now you can imagine a bunch of wood all around, a bunch of channels all around, and then we are pouring concrete into all that. That completes our foundation and then we are ready to start framing. That will be the next step. So you'll be back here and you'll shoot a video of that one. This project is built on a hill. As you can imagine, the elevation of the hill, and you can imagine how much we've had to cut into the hill and how much soil we've had to export. For some projects, we import soil. For some projects, we export soil. For this project so far, we've exported 147 truckloads worth of soil, each of these being the big trucks on the freeways. So you can imagine digging all this, excavating all this, and imagine the distance from the top of the soil there, which is the, what's called the natural grade, to the bottom of the lower section, that's about a good 25, 30 feet of soil that we've extracted from here and then exported. So the considerations are when you have a subfloor partial basement like this, it's basically a bunker. It's basically a concrete bunker because you don't want the soil collapsing and collapsing into the basement and basically destroying the basement. A certain consideration is given to the structural integrity of the basement there, different type of design than the area upstairs. Upstairs also we have certain challenges you have bedrooms here that have windows because bedrooms require egress windows. In case of a fire, you should be able to jump out of a bedroom. But these egress windows cannot lead into a mountain sitting outside the window. That's not allowed. So what we have outside, basically wells outside windows, they're made of steel and they have a certain protected area. So you can jump out a window, not face any soil that may collapse on you. You have this layer of steel protecting you and then there's a ladder. So the ladder allows you to come out of the well. And these are called light wells. They bring in light from the top and they allow you this open space so you can jump out of the window and escape. So this project has five different light wells depending on where bedrooms are and where the windows are that are facing the hillside there. So that's how we build on hilly land, different structural integrity, different types of concrete, higher PSI rating, pounds per square inch rating for the concrete, higher thickness of steel bars, the rebar, and the light wheels we needed. And on top of all that, when you dig so much into the ground, you often have issues with water because you have either a high water table or you have water coming from the top of the mountain and collecting somewhere. A project like this has a lot of drainage work as well. And we have three different levels where we have these drainage pipes because in a foundation for a basement you never want water rising above the foundation because then you'll end up water coming into the basement itself. So we have a set of pipes below the slab basement, slab foundation of the basement. So water should never rise to the bottom of the foundation for the basement. So that water basically goes out and is gravity fed and goes away into a pretty complex system designed by a civil engineer. Then you have another layer of pipes above that. So water shouldn't come into the walls that are surrounding the basement. Then you have a third layer of pipes that take water away away from the roof drains and basically discharge that water away from the property so water doesn't collect next to your foundation. So we do all that work just to make sure that the foundation is sound and water doesn't get into the basement. We can certainly talk to potential clients on, about building on a hill remotely. All we need is a survey. So there are two types of surveys. There's a boundary survey showing the property lines and there's a survey or a topo survey. The topographic survey shows us the contours and shows us how the land is curved and the elevations of different sections of the lot. So we can look at a topo survey and provide feedback to our potential clients about what they can do with such a property. And if they want, if it's within driving distance, we can certainly visit and give them some guidance as well. Building on a hill typically is more expensive than building on a flat land for a few reasons. A, the amount of site work, the amount of dirt we have to excavate and export, that can add to the cost quite a lot. Here I am standing in a basement that we built. You can see the amount of dirt we've had to excavate. Let's describe to you very quickly what this basement does. And upstairs we have five bedrooms. Here in the basement also, we have a bedroom on this side. 
We have a home theater here, full bath over here, so that's why you see the plumbing connections. And we have a big gym on that side and a big family room on, on this side, and then access to the upstairs from this section. So that's what we do in a custom home, in a basement. And then there's a lot of drainage work that we've done to make sure that water doesn't come into the basement. So lots of details that we can cover with you. Construction costs are very high in the Bay Area. So typically people are quoting $400, $500, $600 a square foot. And when you have a basement that's involved with all the concrete that needs to be poured, with all the excavation that needs to be done, with all the site work that needs to be done, and all the drainage work that needs to be done, now you're talking $600 a square foot, $700 a square foot. That's why people say basements are expensive, and you can see how much dirt we've excavated in this one. So keep those costs in mind as you consider a project with a basement. So now you know, we build a lot of these projects on hilly areas. We know how complicated these foundations are. We build basements. We do a lot of drainage work. We do a lot of site work, excavation, all that stuff that's needed for complicated projects like these. So if you have a project, you always should look for someone who's experienced who's done this before, who's not going to use your project to learn so they won't make any mistakes. Look for people like us who are experienced. Visit our website, breakthroughbuilders.com, and we'll be happy to help you plan a project like this and execute.